Good day, friends. Uh, today we will discuss uh, the idea of tossing coins further. In the previous video, we discussed the probability of tossing a fair coin. Uh, now we will talk about uh, the probability of tossing a coin which is not fair, which is also known as a biased coin. Now a biased coin is a coin uh, in which the probability of head is not equal to the probability of tail. So you may have a higher chance of getting a head or a higher chance of getting a tail. Um, and uh, let's do an example based on this idea. Okay, let's assume that we have a coin which is biased in such a way that the probability of getting a head is 7 out of 10 and the probability of getting a tail is 3 out of 10. And the question requires you to toss this coin 5 times. So, uh, and, and the question says, what is the probability that out of those five times, we get the first two tosses as head, the third is a tail, the fourth is a head, and the fifth is a tail. Now this is a, a specific order mentioned to us, so uh, we will just write down the exact order. We'll say head, head, tail, head, tail. Now, for this particular question, it's pretty easy now because there's only one way that we can win. That is the first is a head, the second is a head, the third is a tail, the fourth is a head, and the fifth is a tail. So uh, the probability of this event is going to be 7 out of 10 for the first to be a head, 7 out of 10 for the second to be a head, then 3 out of 10 for the third to be a tail, then 7 out of 10 for the fourth to be a head, and then 3 out of 10 for the last to be a tail. Since this is the only way that we can win, we do not need to multiply this with the number of arrangements because there is no other arrangement possible. This is the only arrangement that will make us win. So when you multiply this, we will get 7 into 7 into 3 into 7 into 3 divided by 10 into 10 into 10 into 10 into 10. And this simplifies to 3087 divided by 100,000. So this is the probability that the first two will be heads, the third will be a tail, the fourth is a head, and the fifth is a tail. Now let's take this example a step further and see what would happen if we are not asked uh, to, to get heads and tails in any specific order. So let's say the question says that we have a biased coin in, in which the probability of getting a head is 7 out of 10 and the probability of getting a tail is 3 out of 10. And the question says, what is the probability of getting exactly 3 heads and 2 tails? Okay. So three heads and two tails. Now here we'll apply a three-step method of finding the probability in cases in which the order is not specified. Step one is to write down one particular favorable outcome. So that's step one. One particular favorable outcome would be head on the first row, head on the second, head on the third, tail on the fourth, and tail on the fifth. Step two is find the probability of this outcome. So seven out of 10 for the first head, 7 out of 10 again for the second head, 7 out of 10 similarly for the third head, then 3 out of 10 for the fourth toss being a tail, and the last one again for tail 3 out of 10. Now this is not the end of it because this is just one way that we can uh, get uh, the three heads and two tails to occur. But since the order in the question was not specified, we should then also figure out all the different ways in which this can happen. So the number of arrangements of three heads and two tails, head, 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 tail, tail, is equal to, coming back to permutations, these are five letters, so five factorial, upon three heads, so three factorial, 
and 2 tails 2 factorial and this simplifies to 10 so we multiply the answer of step 2 with this 10 and this entire calculation simplifies to 3087 upon 10,000 okay so since the order was not specified we had to figure out all the different ways in which this could happen and that's why we have to multiply it by the number of possible arrangements of three heads and two tails I hope this example is clear to you okay so let's take the same concept further and let's try out an example in which uh, let's say that uh, we have a certain player let's say that's Ronaldo who is my son's favorite football player and uh, his job is to take five kicks uh, five penalty kicks uh, in in a football match now let's say that the priority that Ronaldo actually successfully converts a penalty kick into a goal is 4 out of 5 which seems about right for somebody uh, of his skill level and the priority that he fails in making the penalty kick converting it into goal is 1 out of 5 okay now uh, let's say that this guy is is asked to take 5 kicks in a row so he takes 5 attempts at the penalty kick and the question says find the probability that Ronaldo is able to get exactly three successes and two failures okay the order is not specified so you'll have to try the three-step method I suggest that you pause the video here for a little while and try solving this on your own and once you've uh, gotten some kind of an answer then press the play button and see whether you have got the right answer so go ahead and press the pause button right now okay welcome back so I hope you've tried out this question and uh, you have some sort of an answer now we'll try the three steps step one write down one particular favor arrangement of the favorable outcome which is success 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 failure and failure step two calculate the probability of this outcome so for four out of five for the first success four out of five for the second success four out of five for the third success one out of five for the fourth one being a failure and similarly one out of five for the fifth one being a failure and we will multiply these because this is an AND condition and step 3 we must figure out all the possible arrangements of the letters S S S F F so the number of arrangements we will apply again the permutation method that's going to be 5 factorial divided by you have 3 S's so 3 factorial and 2 F's so 2 factorial and this will come out to be 10 again so we will multiply the answer of step 2 with 10 and that should give us the answer and that's equal to 128 upon 625 I hope you got this as your answer right now let's try a further example uh, similar question uh, Ronaldo is taking penalty kicks and we know from experience that his probability of success is 4 out of 5 and his probability of failure is 1 out of 5 and the question says find the probability of at least one success now the probability of at least one success is equal to probability of at least one success is equal to 1 minus the probability of no success so the first step for us would be to figure out the probability of no success 
which means that we will assume that every kick results in a failure and there is no goal. So we have to find the probability of all five kicks resulting in a failure. Now that's pretty unlikely to happen uh, given that the probability of failure for any particular kick is one out of five. So let's see what would happen if, if we try to figure out the, cat, the probability of all five kicks resulting in a failure. So this is going to be one out of five multiplied by itself five times which is equal to one out of three, one, two, five. And as you can see, that's a very low probability that all five kicks will result in a failure. Very unlikely to happen. So therefore, the probability of at least one success, or at least one goal resulting from those penalty, those five penalty kicks, is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over 3, 1, 2, 5. And that's going to be equal to 3, 1, 2, 4 upon 3, 1, 2, 5. Okay? So remember, the important part to learn in this particular question is the probability of at least one success is equal to 1 minus the probability of no success. Always use that to figure out such cases. So here's a challenge question for you, okay? Same question. Ronaldo is taking penalty kicks. And the question says, find the probability that in five attempts, he's able to convert at least two goals. At least two goals. Okay? I want you to hit the pause button now and try solving this question on your own. Right. So, the possibilities that can happen in this particular attempt at at five attempts at the goal, is that Ronaldo can have zero successes and five failures, one success and four failures, two successes and three failures, three successes and two failures, four successes and one failure, or five successes and no failures. And the question is, I find the priority that in five attempts is able to get at least two goals, which means that the possibilities that are acceptable to us are these. Now, I'll have to find out each of these individual probabilities and add them up, which is going to take me longer. So the short way of doing this would be to figure out the probabilities of these two situations, add them up, and subtract them from one. So let's attempt doing that. So as we saw in the previous question, the probability that he is able to convert no goal and all five are failures is one out of three, one, two, five. The probability of, of one success and four failures, uh, we'll have to use the three-step method. So the probability that the first one is success is four out of five. And the probability that the next four are failures are going to be one out of five each. And this will have to be multiplied with the number of possible arrangements of uh, S, F, 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 and F. And the arrangements would be 5 factorial upon, because there are 4 of the same kind, divide by 4 factorial, which is exactly 5. And when you multiply all of this, the answer comes out to be exactly 20 upon 3, 1, 2, 5. So the probability that he's able to get either no goal or only one goal is going to be 1 upon 3, 1, 2, 5, plus 20 upon 3, 1, 2, 5, which is equal to 21 upon 3, 1, 2, 5. So therefore, the probability of at least two goals is going to be equal to 1 minus 21 upon 3, 1, 2, 5, and that is equal to 3, 1, 0, 4 upon 3, 1, 2, 5. See you in the next video.